Branda. Welcome to you all and good morning. Welcome to the Monetary Policy and Financial Stability Statement. The National Bank of Rwanda appreciates your response to the invitation and your candid participation to this MPFSS. I am Ingrid Chuzuzo. I work in the Financial Sector Development and Inclusion Department, and I am pleased to be your host this morning. As per our agenda, we'll follow the Monetary Policy and Financial Stability Statement from the Governor of the National Bank of Rwanda, Honorable John Gwangomga. In addition to the statement, the National Bank of Rwanda will launch to the industry a set of guidelines for deepening women's financial inclusion. We'll receive comments and questions for each of the sessions. So ahead of time, again, we appreciate your interactions. We also invite you to interact not only in the room, but also through our social media, through hashtag MPFSS2023. And that hashtag is applicable on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For people who are not able to be with us physically, we are live or through a YouTube stream. And we are also happy to receive your interaction today. For the media in the house, there'll be a press conference after today's agenda, and you are all invited to come and ask further questions to today's program. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome the Governor of the National Bank of Rwanda for his statement. You're welcome, Governor. Thank you, Ingrid. I hope I'm uh, connected and loud and clear. Yes, good morning uh, and welcome to this year's, the second MPFSS for this year. So on our minister, on our members of parliament, colleagues from the financial sector, our development partners, all protocols observed. Welcome to this morning session. Tawa mchuje mwese, tuwa wachiri ye muri chigane tuje kujira na namwe. Tuwa shimirako mweme ye vutumire vuga chukujira ngo tugani ire. Uko ubukungu uhagaze, ukulugwe gurugwe maru uhagaze. Hariko tuga luka chane chane kubire wa bae nguri jihugu. So this morning, as uh, said by Ingrid, we will really focus on the economic performance for the first half of this year, and then zoom in or focus mainly on BNR's mandate. That's how we are doing with the monetary policy, how we are doing with inflation, and then on the financial stability. And we'll be happy to receive feedback from yourselves. We've tried to summarize a bit more than we normally do, the presentation, to allow more time for interaction. But I'm sure you all have access to the, details, to the detailed document that gives uh, detailed figures and uh, information around the performance of the economy and the financial stability in general. So as always, we start with the, the performance of the global economy to put in, into context uh, what uh, affected or, uh, yes, what affected our economy in general. So, and as, again, as we always say, we get this from the monetary fund, the International Monetary Fund, mainly that's where we get these numbers. So as you can see on the screens, it's the global economy slowing down this year, is projected to slow down this year after a big recovery in 2021 and 2022. Uh, from 3.5% growth achieved last year to 3% projected for this year and 2024. And this is mainly driven by tight monetary conditions. Again, as you've been following, most of the central banks globally tightened their monetary stance to deal with the high inflationary pressures that almost every country had over 2022. Uh, and this has, of course, really tightened the financing of the economies and has affected or has contributed to this slowdown we see uh, in the global economy. There's also 
tight physical space. We had challenges. We've had shocks from COVID to the Russia-Ukraine war. All that has affected countries and has really squeezed their, their fiscal space or their abilities to finance their budgets. That impacts on the economic performance in general. Global or geopolitical tensions still persist. We still live with the Russia-Ukraine war and other lingering challenges here and there. So that also contributed to the slowdown of the global economy. And climate change, of course, is affecting us all. And that will be coming back to that when we come to the uh, national economy. Same story with Sub-Saharan Africa, though the decline is not as big as at the uh, global stage, so declining from 3.9 to 3.5% 3 uh, this year. As I said, the inflation that was really high in 2022 pushed uh, central banks to take tight uh, monetary conditions or so tight decisions. But what is good to note is that this year we see prices going down. Mainly here we focus on commodity prices. Uh, both the energy index and the non-energy index. Non-energy index mainly includes food items, fertilizers, and the likes. All these are going down. The first half we saw even a bigger reduction for the, the energy index reducing by 30.4%. Percent and overall, we project this to reduce by 25.8 percent during the course of this year. Uh, same with non energy uh, index, uh, reducing by 14 percent in the first half, and expected to reduce uh, to negative or to nine by 9.6 percent. And, and this has food commodities going down, the fertilizers have really gone down. Uh, and fertilizers is linked to the reduction in uh, gas uh, prices, and gas is the main uh, contributor to raw materials to fertilizers. So this is contributing to overall reduction in global inflation. So last year we had high inflation global at 8.7%, and this is expected to slow down to 6.8% this year, and 5.2% next year. And that is contributing to slowing down of the tightening of the uh, monetary policy conditions across uh, different countries. Sub-Saharan Africa is also reducing the inflation, but though still high at 14%, uh, and it's mainly linked to climate change, food issues in different African countries. Uh, and uh, this reduction in inflation is also linked to uh, easing of supply disruption that we had had from the COVID time that really had impacted on logistic, uh, uh, logis cost of logistics. So coming now to the uh, domestic economy, as I said, we'll try to summarize. So that was the summary of the performance of the global economy. Uh, as we saw, reduced economic performance, reduced reducing inflation. Uh, now when we come to the domestic uh, economy, we see strong performance in the first half of the year. I think the last numbers we have uh, released this week for Q2, just two days ago by the Institute of Statistics. We had registered 9.2% growth in the first quarter of this year, and the second quarter was 6.3. Uh, uh, so we, we see uh, strong performance in uh, first half of this year, but has started slowing down. As, as you said, we had 9.2%. Uh, in the first quarter, and we are having, we had 6.3% in the second quarter, and we expect overall, I think the projections we have is 6.1% uh, growth this year compared to 9.2% uh, we had uh, last year. So, but we still see strong recovery for the domestic economy, mainly driven by the service sector. There has been big, big uh, uh, resumption in, in, in the, in the uh, tourism sector, and the tourism sector has a lot of externalities, so that has contributed to uh, the high growth in the service sector. Industry sector has also continued to grow, and again, as you see in the external sector, that has also contributed to increasing our exports. Unfortunately, agriculture has really performed poorly for two consecutive years now. Last year, 
we had poor agricultural performance because of bad weather. Same story this year so far, the first half of this year, we see agriculture growing by 0.3%. In fact, the food items are growing negatively, and that has impacted on inflation, as you see. So generally speaking, good performance, overall performance of our domestic economy, expected to remain strong for the rest of the year, though lower than what we achieved in the last two years. On the external sector, uh, I normally say we have like mixed uh, feelings, a mixed story. Good performance in uh, our export, merchandise exports, continues to increase uh, strongly at 11.2% in the first uh, half of this year. But we saw imports increasing much faster than the exports. And uh, the imports are increasing linked to the good performance of the economy. Normally that would be a good story as well. But it becomes a difficult story when you look at the uh, our balance of payments because the trade deficit increased by 23.3% uh, uh, in the first half of this year. And uh, that has greatly contributed to the pressures you see on the, our foreign exchange market. So in the first half of this year, our flour had depreciated already by 8.8% against the US dollar. I think today we've reached, we've gone above 12%. The last time we had high inflation was in 2016. I think we had 9.7%. So this year, because of this high growth in import bill linked to the good performance in our economy, uh, has really uh, surpassed the good performance we see in exports. Uh, so that has impacted greatly on our exchange market. Though we have uh, uh, good performance on the other uh, parts of the balance of payment, that has eased this pressure on the trade deficit. So we see service exports increasing, and mainly traveling to the tourism that I just said, increasing by 44.3% in the first half. Foreign direct investment also uh, picked up this year uh, from the uh, pressures we had during the COVID time, and remittances have continued to increase. In fact, remittances this time are contributing much higher in terms of foreign exchange uh, resources for our country. And again, uh, at least the comfort here is that we are still uh, have strong reserves for, for the country at 4.4 months of imports by the end of June. So the pressures we see on the exchange Market, I expect it to continue to the end of this year, but we expect it to start easing uh, next year. On inflation, which is our main uh, focus as, as the Monetary Authority, uh, last year was really challenging, increasing throughout the year to a peak of 21.7 in November last year, and started easing from December that time and as we had projected, we see it going down to uh, uh, those still high at 12.3% uh, in uh, August this year. But we expect it, we still expect it to go to around 7.6% average for Q4 and uh, below 5% as we show in the, in the, in the uh, outlook for next year. Uh, so, but that, of course, depends on how agriculture performs. So when you look at the breakdown of the numbers, core inflation that is mainly uh, composed of imported food, medicine, all other consumables apart from uh, fresh food and uh, uh, energy has continued going down linked to the reduction in the global uh, inflation as indicated earlier. Uh, so in, in decreasing from 15.4 in, in December 2022 to 8.4% uh, August this year. Energy index, I mean, energy inflation has also gone down uh, linked to the reduction in the global energy prices. Fresh food has gone down, but still really high, gone down from high of 50.1% to 29.8%. So there is, though there is a reduction to almost half of what we had, but it's still high, and that is what is keeping us at uh, double-digit inflation uh, in the, uh, by by end of the last uh, two months. In fact, as you see, in July it had gone f down, peaked a bit in in August because August is uh, 
preparing for planting season, so food prices really went up again. We expected this to ease slightly due to uh, production of season C, maybe in the next one month if possible, but we mainly we expect it to start going down in November, December when season A uh, of last year starts kicking in. But the other components we expect it to remain uh, with that downward trend. That's why we are confident that next year we should be around 5% depending on how agriculture performs. So linked to these inflationary uh, developments, the Monetary Policy Authority the monetary policy trends followed the pressures we had on inflation. We had to take actions to deal with inflation. So as you remember, we increased our policy rate from 4.5% February last year uh, to 7% by June this year. Again, as you remember in our last monetary policy, we decided to increase this to 7.5%. Uh, and this is really to deal with the, the pressures we see on, on the market uh, of inflation. And normally we follow the transmission of our decisions in interest rates and uh, we see immediate transmission in the short-term interest rates, especially the interbank rates. As we increase from 4.5 to, to uh, 7%, we see this increase in short-term, uh, what we call uh, the interbank market rate, uh, from 5.4 in first half of last year to 7. 5.5 five in the second half of this year, and as we increased our policy rate to 7.5%, the interbank rate has uh, gone up to 8.1% by August this year. So there is quick transmission in uh, the, the interbank rate. Same with the short-term T-bills that has been increased. You see that in the, in the, in the detailed document. So the, the government borrowing uh, has also, uh, the, the rates have been increasing following the the increase in our policy rates. Deposit rates has also started picking up, uh, as you see, increasing to 9.55 uh, from 7.48 last year. Uh, and this is not just an increase in terms of the rates, but also the, the, the depositors have changed in terms of the maturities. The, they have shifted to mainly, the biggest deposit has shifted mainly to three-year maturity that attracts higher inflation. I mean higher interest rate. So we see movements on all interest rate except the lending rate that is still a bit sticky, around 16%. And these could be many factors. Uh, I, I'll be coming back to the credit risk uh, developments in, in the part on the monetary, I, I mean on the financial stability side. So you see improved credit risk. Uh, and also there are many factors determining the lending rates. But as we see the other rate shifting, we would expect the lending rates to start shifting uh, upwards uh, if the pressures would continue. So we expect the pressures to start going down next year. But if they continue, automatically we would expect to see the lending rate falling the other, the other rates. So that's the story of the monetary policy and how it has been transmitting in the, in the interest rates. Of course, our main target at the end of the day is uh, impacting on the, on, the, on the lending to the economy, and, uh, but there are other factors that have really uh, slowed down on, on, the, on the economy itself, uh, so which slows down the demand and automatically will slow down the pressures on inflation and pressures on exchange rate as well. So on the outlook, I, I think I've already said this, we expect to see uh, inflation continuing to uh, ease to around 7.6% uh, in the last quarter of this year and to around 5% uh, next year, mainly due to the monetary policy decisions, but in a big way due to government decisions uh, that helped to ease pressures on, on some commodity prices. And we expect the government measures that have been taken to try and improve on our agricultural performance to really have an impact on the season A uh, next year that could have a bigger impact on the inflation uh, going to our uh, medium term uh, objective of uh, 5%. There are still risks uh, around these uh, projections. One is the geopolitical tensions. 
We still have challenges with the, uh, the war in Ukraine. Uh, oil supply cuts, we see uh, OPEC cutting their oil supply and that has impacted on the price. I think you saw that over the last uh, one month, price has gone from mid 70s to around 90. Uh, but at least the global projections we see indicates that it won't really go back to hundreds. We expect it to remain around 80% in the medium term. Uh, climate change remains our biggest, our biggest uh, risk to our inflation outlook because it directly impacts our agriculture and that's a big component of our inflation numbers in general. So that was the summary on the monetary policy side. Uh, then on the financial stability side, uh, I think the story has been positive for more than three years now and remains to be positive and even stronger going forward. So at least we continue to see our financial sector uh, growing and deepening. Uh, so when you look at the sector as uh, the sector assets at the percentage of GDP has grown to 63% from 61% average over the past five years. And with all the sectors, as you see all the sectors, the banking sector, the microfinance sector, the insurance sector, all registered the double digit growth. And for the last uh, three years, they've been growing. Uh, so here we, uh, overall assets growing by 18.3% to 9.6 trillion from 8.1 trillion in the first half of last year. Uh, so focusing on the banking sector itself, uh, we see the lending which is the main activity increasing by, the outstanding loans increasing by 17.3% and this was mainly driven by uh, new authorized loans increasing above above 30 percent in the first uh, half of this year same story with the microfinance institutions again we saw uh, lending microfinance institutions to the private sector increasing when you see that uh, exponential growth the, the line in between that goes up like this that's for other circles i think we indicated this in february last year that this was mainly attributed to uh, sharp increase in lending from Mwari Musako to teachers after the increase of their salaries uh, by the government. So that has seen big growth in uh, loans to the, to the teachers and which really drives the loans in the microfinance sector as well. The credit, uh, as I said earlier, we see uh, credit risk really improving, uh, both in microfinance and in the banking sector. When you look at the banking sector, the Non-performing loans uh, ratio has gone to 3.6%. Uh, I think for once, for two consecutive years, we are below our benchmark of 5%. And it's not just the ratios that are decreasing, but even in nominal terms, as you see uh, from 2021, it d decreased to uh, in lower level in 2022 and sort of stabilized there. Though write-offs contribute to this uh, decrease in, in NPL's uh, nominal numbers, but the good thing is we see the write-offs also reducing. When you compare last year, first half of last year to uh, second half of this year, it has reduced by uh, more than uh, half of, of what was written off last year. We've also seen improvements in recovery of, of written off loans uh, over the last uh, uh, year, which is also positive. Uh, so the same story with microfinance institutions, we also see their non-performing loans increasing. So there is good performance of the, the borrowers themselves linked to the good performance of the economy contributing to these uh, health numbers in the, in the quality of uh, loans, but also improved performance of the financial institutions in terms of the underwriting practices. Uh, so that has really helped to see reduction of the credit risk which, as I said earlier, contributes to the really uh, the, the pricing of, of the loans themselves, not seeing any increase so far with the inflationary pressures that we've seen and with increased policy rates, this contributes to that. Uh, now focusing on the stability indicators, the, finance, the banking industry remains really sound. Uh, 
and when, we, when you look at these uh, stability indicators, the first car, the capital adequacy ratio, is the measure of the capacity of the banks to withstand any shocks. It's, it's really a measure of their, of their capital base vis-a-vis -vis the risks they underwrite, and this is, remains strong. Our minimum uh, required capital adequacy ratio is 15%, and banks have maintained this above 20% for quite some time. So last, I mean this, uh, uh, to June this year it was at 21%. So despite the write-offs that we've seen, the capital adequacy ratio remains strong because banks have been making profit and most of that has been retained uh, to beef up the, the capital base and give them capacity to continue uh, lending to the private sector and continue growing their business. I've already said, talked about the NPLs. This uh, remains really below the 5% uh, benchmark for two years consecutive now. And uh, the liquidity ratio, the, their capacity to meet the demands of their customers in terms of uh, the liquidity, this also remains strong. Our minimum requirement is 100%, and this has remained above 200 for uh, quite some time. So this. This table is what we focus on as the regulator. This is our main interest. How stable are these, uh, these banks? And these are the main measures. Of course, there are others in terms of governance, in terms of other practices. But when you look at the performance, uh, it really speaks well to, to this uh, uh, stability table that you see here. Uh, which is the same story with microfinance institutions, uh, also strong capital base reduced uh, non-performing loans, as I had said earlier, and strong liquidity uh, buffers they have to serve their clients. So the, the lending financial institutions, both banks and microfinance institutions, remain strong and stable, and they, they've been able to, to serve their clients, as you saw in the credit, they've been increasing lending to the private sector. On insurance sector, we normally focus on the private insurance sector because the two public insurance uh, uh, companies are really strong and solid. We don't have any big concern on their stability. So here we normally track uh, and present the performance of the private uh, insurance companies or sector. There's been really improved performance of this uh, insurance sector for over the last couple of six years. I always take 17 as, as, as a benchmark because that's where we were almost losing the insurance sector. They, they had gone to the worst they could ever achieve with high losses, uh, a lot of malpractices. But from then, there have been reforms and they have been improving in terms of their performance. And so part of the measures we look at is the, their claims. And uh, so normally, we, the claims ratio shouldn't go above 6%. So as we see in the first half of this year, it was on average around 57%. And for once, for once, the insurance sector is making an underwriting profit. They've been in losses for more than seven years, but for once, because medical and motor insurance are doing better, they're able to make uh, underwriting profit. And that is a measure that shows the stability of the insurance sector. So that's a good development we, we monitor. And there are stability indicators we follow. It's a solvents. Uh, they are capital based on the risks they, they, they undertake because that's the business of the insurance anyway. So we, we normally require that the minimum uh, solvents margin should be around 100%, and they've remained strong uh, around over 256%. Uh, in terms of their solvency margin. And liquidity has been improving. Over the last three years, we struggled to, to meet liquidity at industry level, the liquidity ratio uh, above 100%, and this uh, been able to achieve it in the last uh, uh, six months. So they, I would say really insurance sector is promising. Now we, what remains is sort of the, the fighting period is, is sort of uh, overcome. Now what remains is to grow the sector in terms of products uh, and reaching uh, more customers and deepening the, the insurance services within the economy. 
the pension sectors still remain strong. Uh, the first part talks about RSSB, that we saw their assets growing by 16 uh, percent, uh, and this remains strong uh, and uh, with diversified uh, investments and increasing uh, uh, contributions. So at least we see uh, in the medium term a strong performance of the pension sector. And the, the Joheza, that is really a good product that came uh, into being not long ago. So we see Ezroheza has continued to improve in terms of the number of contributors have been increasing and their assets have been increasing as well. Uh, there's been a lot of mobilization around. And this way the assets are not that as big as RSSB, but at least the number of contributors, the number of Rwanda that I now have uh, pension savings have been increasing, which is good for the stability and safety of our, of our citizens. So I think this came really to cover the excluded uh, uh, citizens that were not part of RSSB, uh, and so we see more coming on board, and that is uh, uh, a good development. For the first time, we are presenting this uh, table on non-deposit taking institutions. Uh, these are new uh, sort of mandate of the central bank. We we are now overseeing or regulating leasing companies, credit guarantee schemes, trust and company service providers. These are linked to Kigali International Financial Center. And then there, there's the lending only uh, institutions. So it has been growing in number. Uh, so far we have now 37 nine deposit taking financial institutions. And they are, as you can see, their, their, their assets and their lending uh, to the private sector has been also increasing. So this is a new development that we, we took on not long ago, and we see positive developments as well. On the payment systems, which is the last part of this uh, financial stability presentation is, uh, again, which is sort of similar to the presentation we've had over the last couple of years, we continue to see good developments in the, in the payment systems or digitizing uh, financial transactions. So active uh, subscribers have really increased by uh, to 6.3 uh, million from 5.4 million uh, last year. And we see new fintechs coming into uh, this space. So last last uh, year, uh, or the last six months, we've uh, licensed 10 uh, fintechs supporting the ecosystem of uh, uh, digitizing our payment systems or our financial uh, transactions. A uh, number of transactions have increased. Uh, active merchants, I think this is w one interesting development. Uh, as you remember, during COVID, we see a big growth in terms of uh, merchants uh, accepting digital payments. Uh, it, has, it had grown then when uh, fees were introduced in 2021, we see this dropping. Uh, but with campaigns, government working with the service providers, we see a big, really big increase, or a big uptake of these uh, uh, merchant uh, uh, codes and uh, facilities. So increasing from 52 last year to 250,000 uh, this year. All this has contributed to the value of uh, electronic transactions as a percentage of GDP growing to 160% from 11% last year. In fact, by 2020, we were below 50%. Uh, so there has been exponential growth in this uh, over, the, uh, over the last two years. Uh, so these are just key developments. We talked about RIPS upgrade over the last two years. We've been upgrading our uh, payment system. And this now is fully operational 24-7. For once, we brought in nine bank uh, financial institutions, 11 microfinance institutions onboarded directly on our RIPS. And now their clients can transact directly with the clients uh, of the other banks uh, electronically or digitally. Uh, the other new development is the Rwanda uh, uh, interoperability switch, the eCash. So far, 1.8 million registered users just started just linking Airtel and, and uh, uh, 
MTN uh, mobile money. So we expect this to grow even faster when they integrate with the, the banks. And we think by the end of this year, most of the banks will be already integrated into the RNDPS. And then going forward, we expect them to introduce single merchant code for, for uh, merchant transactions, which will completely change uh, the transactions within uh, uh, our merchants or within uh, buying and selling of goods. Uh, so this has been the key drivers of this cashless uh, campaign. So as I conclude on the financial stability outlook, uh, as I said earlier, we expect to see continued sound and stable financial sector. All the indicators are really strong. Uh, so we don't expect any shock, at least in the, in the medium term, we, what we can project from now. Of course, as a central bank, as a regulator, we continue working closely with the service providers to uh, avoid any shocks that could uh, disrupt the performance of these financial institutions. And uh, so uh, we close the work with the banks, microfinance insurance, insurance, and so. But as we said, at least today, we have strong capital. We have good liquidity base. We are digitizing these uh, financial transactions. So the, the, the base is really good. The environment they're working in is good, and we expect to remain resilient going forward. So thank you for your kind attention. That's the summary of the monetary policy and financial stability statement. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for the round of applause. And thank you very much, Governor, for such an insightful uh, presentation. Um, before we move any further, I would want us to have an opportunity to stretch a little bit. Uh, health is now a priority, even to economic development. So this is how we go about it. We are going to walk and stop. So this will give us an opportunity that if you've seen someone in the room that you would just want to say, hi, good morning, good to see you, it's been long, please let's stand up. Nice. So we can walk to the person we want to catch up with, but let's walk. Let's not say hi to the person next to us. The point is to walk. Thank you, thank you very much. I hope people who took a walk really enjoyed.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We will need to take our seats back to be able to proceed with the questions and answers. And most importantly, thank you to the people who walked. I think it did you some good. Wow. Now I'm seeing that some people really walked. <laughs> I really appreciate. Thank you once again. Without further ado, please let's welcome our panelists to take more of your questions and comments about the presentation we've had. Uh, Honorable Governor, I welcome you back on stage. Honorable Deputy Governor, you're welcome on stage. And Chief Economist, you're welcome on stage. We are going to receive questions by show of hands. Uh, microphones are ready to be distributed. And we appreciate if before your question, you introduce yourself and then you state your question. Uh, do we have some early hands up yet? Yes, we have a hand already up here in front. If you could have a microphone quickly here. Maybe if you could see about three hands at a time so that we take questions a round of threes. Welcome, Honorable. Thank you so much. My name is Alexis Mujisha. I'm a senator uh, coming from uh, Economic and Finance uh, Commission. First of all, I would like to start by thanking the, the governor for the good financial statement he has presented. But of course, we will need some clarification to some points uh, because the, there are big concerns for the public, for Rwandans, I mean. My intervention will come back to pension sector to insurance companies and the, how they perform and to inflation reduction. The first point, uh, which goes with the pension sector, I would like uh, to see clearly how uh, the regulating institution as BNL is working on inflation uh, regarding the facilitation uh, offered to, uh, to pension beneficiaries uh, when it comes to inflation. Uh, prices are increasing on the ground, on the markets, and the pension beneficiaries are complaining of uh, insatisfaction, if I can call it like that, because the facilitations they are receiving from RSSB are lower than the value they expect to get when you compare it to the prices we have on the markets. So some clarification will help. The second point is on insurance. Recently, we had information that uh, Prices of insurance uh, have increased up, up to the level of doubling, almost doubling. For some vehicles, what I saw is that for new vehicles less than five years uh, have not been uh, increased to the prices of insurance, but other vehicles, other automobiles have an increase of around double. Yet, the statement of the governor is saying that the sector is promising. So, if you understand the concern of beneficiaries, 
Rwandans, clients of uh, insurance uh, companies. Uh, how do you, what, what is the comment of Benel to the high increase of prices in insurance sector? Thank you. Uh, third point is the inflation. The statement we have had recently is showing the reduction of the rate of inflation, yet prices are increasing on markets. On high level, what is your comment? Thank Thanks you so very much, much Honorable. Uh, we would really appreciate to receive three questions at a time to better manage. Uh, yes, sure. Okay. There are three already. Yes. Yes, uh, thanks for the, for the questions. Um, some with my colleagues here who will work together to, to answer the question. So on, on the pension question, maybe I invite the DG, but I saw uh, Regis here, so maybe because we don't really regulate the, the benefits. So I think I request Regis to the, the DG of uh, uh, the CEO of RSSB to take on this question and explain how they determine uh, the, 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 the benefits of pensioners. Uh, the, there is a policy and in that case it's RSSB and maybe the Minister of Finance would also help to, to, to answer that. Uh, prices of insurance almost doubling. Uh, I think the increase that happened this year on insurance uh, premiums was on uh, third party insurance and it increased by around 50% for most of the vehicles, except I think two categories that increased more than that. That was uh, uh, trucks that have had accidents of recent. I think they're the ones that increased above 50%. Uh, above the uh, comprehensive insurance uh, is time to be collected by the, the industry players there here. What I know, most of the comprehensive insurance reduced. It didn't increase. Most of the vehicles, the comprehensive insurance reduced. Uh, so, and as we explained some time back, this was based on uh, uh, studies done on the right pricing of the risks these insurance sectors were taking. Uh, to be sincere with you, maybe us as regulators, we are really interested in the right pricing of the products that the service providers are giving. That's why I said when I look at the performance of the insurance sector today, it is promising because they are doing the right things. So 2017, when these uh, premiums were very low because of price undercutting among themselves, the industry was collapsing. So the, the few increases that has been done over the last, uh, since 2018, has stabilized the, the insurance sector. So the, this, the increase that we had done this year was really in line with the uh, actuarial studies uh, done by the insurance companies. And so it was in line with the right pricing of the risk they were taking. Normally, their, their main business is insurance uh, uh, and writing insurance uh, uh, risks. The fact that they've been making losses in the main business, that was worrying us as, as regulators. Uh, it, it would not assure sustainability of this uh, sector, which is key to long-term uh, economic development. So the fact that now for once, they've started making profit from the underwriting business, their main business, at least we think that is assures us of their of their stability. It might really be uh, challenging to the consumers, but that's the right pricing. We couldn't do otherwise, at least from our end as we see it. Uh, then on uh, yes, on, on on inflation, uh, when we say inflation is reducing. It's not really that prices are reducing, but the rate at which prices are increasing is reducing. It's only some items uh, like energy products, when the, the energy products reduced internationally, 
we saw that reducing, though not as big as it had reduced internationally because government had put in subsidies so as they were uh, applying these reduction uh, on international prices, there was a uh, slight reduction in the subsidies government was giving. But when we say inflation is reducing, it's normally saying the prices are increasing at a lower rate. And as you say, when I would, food increasing at 30%, though it's better than what we had 50% some time back, but still high. So uh, at least we, we wouldn't, I hope we don't want to be misunderstood that when we say inflation is reducing, we mean prices are reducing, unfortunately not. Uh, so what we expect is to at least stabilize the prices. We don't ex expect to see these big increases of prices. So briefly, that's what we mean. Uh, and uh, I think all actions by government is really to, to improve on agriculture. That's the biggest challenge and biggest drive of inflation today. In most cases, when we have good produce, you see prices of food going down. Th that is, it happens. It happens from time to time when we have good harvest, prices go down. It's not just inflation that goes down, but even the prices go down. But for now, because we've had bad season for three consecutive seasons, season A last year, season B, and season A this year, even season B this year, it's like two consecutive years we've had bad agricultural seasons that has kept the prices high. Unfortunately, they continue increasing. What I know government has been trying to, but we have the minister here, and I, I shouldn't be saying what the government is doing when we have the Minister of Commerce here. I think he can say more on that. Thank you. So, Regis. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Regis Sugemashiro, CEO of RSSB. Thank you, Governor, for a great presentation and honorable for a very good question. Uh, in regards to the pension and the inflation impact on the benefits they receive today. Uh, it's a point that has been noted. We've heard our members, indeed, who also have shared the same feedback. The good news is that there is uh, an ongoing study following uh, an actuarial study that was done last year. Uh, and the point of that uh, analysis is to come up with a, a fit solution, considering all the many factors that have been uh, identified in the actuarial study. Um, we expect a solution to be proposed uh, towards early next year. Uh, it will be discussed with all the stakeholders of the government and different uh, legislation, uh, legislative arms to pass the laws. Uh, but the good news is that we are aware, we are working on it, and we are optimistic that the final outcome will be a solution that can um, please our members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, we're going to take more questions. We have one here in front and a second one over there. Uh, microphones, please. And by the way, feel free to ask in Kenya Rwanda. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Governor, for inviting us and thank you for your clear presentation. My name is Leticia Ninawiza. I'm Senator, Deputy Chair of the Economic and Budget Committee. Um, allow me to ask my question in Kenya Rwanda. Njirango, if you want to give it a home, it is a Rwanda. I call your governor, it was on a Shakaga Kubadiza Benshi. Nijichiro chichiri hejuru o mngikora na wuhanga, chane chane mguhere rekanya mafaranga, awa nwako resheje za telefon. E, Tukwebge chane chane awa jagu haa hamu isoko, nyako wa gavana, e, niwa tukwe merira kuhishura uko resheje telefon. Mwakuge awa ti baradukata. Kandi bjo, nivjo kuko nawe ujie kuhishura baragukata. Mwareba ayo mafaranga yose umuntu ugura nugurisha bagenda babakata ugasanga harimo icyo ese murabikora aho iki Ikindi cyakabiri nashakaga kubaza nanone benshi bavuga nuko mu bigo by'imari ciriritse inyungu zikiri hejuru kandi nkuko mubizi mwagaragaje uruhare rwazo mu iterambere ry'ubukungu ni mari muri iki gihugu Ariko nyakubahwa governor 
iki kiguzi nako inyungu ziracyari hejuru kandi ikorana buhanga riracyari hasi ese bino bigo biciritse by'imari murabipangira iki kugira ngo nabo nabyo bikoreshe ikorana buhanga nabantu babashe kwishyura neza ingendo ziracyari ndende kandi nkuko nabivuze inyungu iracyari hejuru mutubwire neza icyo mubikorera sector y'ubuhinzi mwavuze ko nibyo ira contributing ariko ntabwo birajya hejuru cyane kera mwigeze kutubwira ko hatekerezwa no kuzashyirwaho bank y'ubuhinzi ese biracyari mu nzozi zacu cyangwa dukure amaso murakoze murakoze cyane reka twakira ikindi kibazo kimwe one more question and then we can answer them yes We can be answering that as we wait for is somebody ready? Yes, yes please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the presentation and the invitation. Um, my name is Kevin Karobia from BK Capital. I have um, three questions. Uh, the first one is on uh, credit to the uh, private sector. I think uh, from the presentation, lending rates have stabilized around 16%. Has, have we seen uh, this translate into higher credit to the private sector? Then the second question um, is on trends that we've seen in the short term uh, government borrowing market. I think on our end, we've been seeing that the acceptance rates, uh, especially on the T-bills, has been uh, considerably low in the uh, last few weeks. Also, the amount offered um, has also been a bit lower. If you look at last week, uh, 10.2 uh, uh, Rwandan francs, 10.2 billion Rwandan francs. I think this week's auction around 17 billion. They are uh, considerably lower than what we've been seeing um, in the past. Maybe if you can uh, comment to that. And then the last one is on the insurance sector. Um, we've seen a uh, performance of the general, which is um, mainly driven by motor and medical. Um, what's the performance of the life um, insurance business and also in terms of uh, penetration rate insurance, penetration in Rwanda, has it also grown um, with the improved performance of the insurance sector? Thank you. Yeah, th thank you. Uh, okay, I request my colleagues to answer some of the questions. Uh, uh, Deputy Governor, I think you can handle the questions from the BK Capital uh, gentleman. Uh, that's the, the cred no, credit, no credit, I will request Thierry to answer the question on uh, on credit and TBS and then uh, the performance and penetration of the, of the insurance sector. I request the Deputy Governor to handle that. And uh, Maybe the deputy governor could also handle the question on the MFI rates. Uh, then, Nyakwa Hona Retisio Kuchiwazacha Chibichiro Jikola Nauhanga Vichiri Hezuru. Hezuru Gonabju Viva Vifi Arbutu Gongo, it depends on Hezuru Nihe Vijenda Vitoko. When I hit Chiro Chimwe, Navuzaho Charity up to New America, Gukoresha, Korea Christian, and Akuja Kugura, Gukoresha, Chotkita Machant Cod, Lukum Muriko video, Chiro Yavia Vieho, Wuni Berea of Yari Mukwijana, Kanda and Wachiva Vikoresh. Numa Muriko video of Kura, who could have washes Kazan, Gukoresh, Koranahanga Mukishurana, Ariko Nirango Travjem and Yuko, and have Gubia Komeza Kuba Kuun. Bibaye kubuntu nta muntu washora imari muri yo service kuko umushora amara za muri service kuko afite icyo na wazakuramo eh so ubwo rero byabaye ngombwa ko hagaruka ho igiciro kuri kwishyura na kuri bakoresheje riya kora namuhanga icyo gihe leta yashoboye kuganira na nababishinzwe igiciro kiragabanuka kiva kuri mwe kwijana kijya kuri 0.25% ubundi igiciro cyishyurwa n'umucuruzi kuko umucuruzi ni uhabwe service 
Kwa wako kuingo wa chira cash kuri bubare ni mugoro wa chango kumangu kafatima tu kuka idara muri bank ya chiru kura shiru kura na wanga na mamvyo kujia muri zo na mbarazi ndi so na abu muguzi na mu mateje kwa ya chuma wugizi zahari abu muchuru zi yeme yogucha umuguzi ama faranga yogu koresha hili ya kura na wanga hariba mwe babi jabi uzinga hariba mwe babi babi renga hoba ka Eda akanga ko umwishyura ukoresheje ikora na buhanga cyangwa se akagusaba ngo bongereho ariko ntabwo byemewe ko umuguzi agira icyo atanga ikindi ntabwo umuguzi yatanga no mucuruza atange ibyo ntabwo bibaho so twashyize hi nyigo unfortunately ntabwo irasohoka neza inoze inyigo twereka ubundi giciro kidakabije ntabwo tugenzura ibiciro by'ibicuruzwa bya kurwa kwa financial services ntabwo dutegeka ibiciro bijyaho ariko hari hashyizweho inyigo kugira ngo igi inama y'igiciro ubundi kita kitabangamira abakoresha service kandi gifasha abashora mari muri service kugira ngo bashore gukomeza gukora iyo nyigo rero yaratinze ariko twizeye uko wenda mbere ku imwe akurangira twa twabibonye so cyo navuga nuko icyo abantu bifuza nuko hatabaho igiciro kandi ntabwo byakunda ntabwo 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 waje muri mwa nguhinge nurangiza ujyane ku isoko bitangira ubuntu ntabwo wazasubira guhinga ni nkuko rero nta wa shora amafaranga ngo ashire ko ano hanga ryo kwishyurana narangiza bitangira ubuntu ya mafaranga yashoye ntabwo ya ntacyo yavuze ikindi ibi bintu birahindagurika haraba bikora haraba bibamwo haraba bikomeza biteza imbere so bisaba amafaranga icyo icyo rero twakora nyine iyo nyigo yari kudufasha kugerageza gutanga ikigero kidakabije ariko kuba kuri zero rwose ntabwo ntabwo byakunda kuri banki y'ubuhinzi nta sinzi wenda minister niho hari cyabiziho ariko kuri kuri niba cyangwa sa umuntu wa ministeri ya finance hari aho kugeza ubu ngubu nta makuru dufite yo kuri banki y'ubuhinzi yenda kujyaho aho ubwo belde umuyobozi wa belde ari hano hari ishami dirimo direba specific yabigenanye n'ubuhinzi hari amafaranga leta yigurije muri bank YC afasha ku guteza imbere ubuhinzi bwanyuje muri belde na BDF barafatanya nizo niyo miyoboro numva leta yanyuze mu gukoresha gufasha abahinzi aho kugira ngo bashyireho bank yindi izana izindi cost zo ku zo ku zo ku zo ku running gas so ariko nyira ngo deja wa belde yaza kugira icyo kivuga so the council of the governor agira icyo avuga ku bya bibazo bindi thank you governor na hera ku kibazo cyabajijwe na honorable senator Letitia kuri um urwego rwe bigo by'imari zicitse cyangwa microfinance nibyo koko ikiguzi ke kinguzanyo kiracyari hejuru kubera impamvu navuga ebyiri zitandukanye ya mbere ni yuko ikigero cy'a deposit cyangwa se amafaranga ashyirwa muri microfinance n'abanyamuryango ntago kiragera ku rwego rushimishije cyakabiri mu myaka ishize twagiye tubona ko hari microfinance nyinshi zari zigifite um, inguzanyo zitishyurwa neza ziri hejuru uyu mwaka nkuko uh, governor yabigaragaje niho uh, tubona yuko NPL zagiye hasi ya gatanu kwijana bizanafasha muri uh, mu ari ari kureba imicungire myiza y'ibigo by'imari ziciriritse ariko n'ubushobozi byo gushobora gutanga inguzanyo um, ikindi twavuga nuko um, uyu mushinga wo kugeza ikora na buhanga cyane cyane muri mu murenge sako na uzafasha ubu ugeze ku nubwo ari umushinga watinze ari kugeze ku rwego rushimishije aho bu umurenge sako zigeza ku kwijana na 16 zimaze kugezwaho n'izo byo kora na buhanga tukaba twizera ko uyu mwaka uzarangira sako zose zabugezejwe ikora na buhanga none ho tukajya mu kiciro cy'akabiri cy'consolidation aho hazajya hose ku rwego rw'akarere 
ibyo rero ni bimwe bizatuma haba cost cyangwa se amafaranga twavuga amafaranga ibi bigo by'imari ziciritse cyane cyane za sakos zikoresha agabanuka kwera iryo kora na buhanga no kuzegeranya kugira ngo zigere imbaraga niho rero tuzatangira kubona bishobotse inyungu ku nguzanyo zigabanuka no kukomeza nkuko twabibonye sako zirimo ziragenda zongera deposits cyangwa sabanya muryango amafaranga bizigamira nabyo ni ibintu bituma inguzanyo nazo zishobora kugabanya kugabanuka ku kunyungu bazihera ndumva ricyo nasubiza ku ku byo mwari mwabajije um, and to respond to the question um, from, from Kevin in BK Capital, uh, I will start with the question on the insurance sector. Uh, true, we've seen um, an increase of assets um, in insurance sector, but it's still mainly dominated by uh, the non-life insurers. On the penetration rate, unfortunately, we do not see any uh, substantial progress. Uh, we are still at below 2% if we don't include um, uh, the universal health coverage. Um, on life insurance itself as well, I think as in many emerging countries, the fact that due to the pandemic, one level of incomes of some segments of populations uh, were impacted and actually some uh, people who had subscribed to life insurance were withdrawing their savings to wither the storms of, of the pandemic. So that had an impact on life insurance. Um, but we're hoping that one, with, with the drive to, to really increase savings and educate more people on the uh, benefits of life insurance products, we can see also that sector picking up. Uh, but also there are uh, representatives of, of life insurers here if they want to complement, they could add on. I think that's the question that was asked and then Thierry can follow up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for, for the question. If I have to answer on the credit side, uh, we look at uh, different measures. For example, and, uh, if you look at the new, new loans given by, bank, by banks uh, in the first half of the year, uh, the number has increased. We have more than 40% increase in the first half. Uh, and the main, the main sectors are, uh, I can cite four of them. We have commerce, we have public works and buildings and personal loans and manufacturing. So these are the main sectors that are receiving most of the new loans. Uh, however, if you look at uh, outstanding credits now to the private sector, uh, the, the number is, is a bit different, although uh, we have an increase of uh, around 13% in um, July compared to July last year. The thing is, uh, this, this year, outstanding credit is slightly lower than, than last year. So that's an, indica an indication also of uh, the direction in which when tightened monetary policy, you should see also credits slowing down, right? So lending rates are as sticky as the governor was explaining. Um, so looking at the first half of the year, there's a slight reduction, but looking at quarter two alone, compared to quarter two last year, there's a slight increase. So we're waiting to see, um, it may take some time also for the transmission to be reflected, but ultimately, when you have tight financial condition, tighter monetary policy should have slightly higher interest rates and lower growth in the credits. Thanks. Sorry. Oh, okay. There was a question also on, on, on T-bills and uh, that's maybe uh, perhaps the Ministry of Finance will is bet, better place to answer. But let's say that uh, there's a strategy to go uh, for uh, more T-bonds. Uh, uh, than, than T-bills. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, an overall uh, changing the maturity of, uh, of the profile of borrowing. Uh, Governor, if you permit, we have a few questions for our viewer, from our viewers on YouTube. They all pertain to agriculture, so I'll try to summarize it, the, the three questions into one. Um, 
the, the one summarizing question could be, as we have seen, agriculture sector is not performing well. What are the couple of policies that you are putting in place with Minagri in order to address this matter? A sub-question to this was whether if it's related to climate change and what are we doing to address this issue, as well as the fact that agriculture employs the majority of our population. So what are the strategies? I don't know if you have anybody from the Minister of Agriculture here. I think we will, it will be a better place to answer that question. But at least what I know, we work with, we work with, the, with the Minister of Agriculture. The, uh, we have what we call the Agriculture Forecasting Team, and uh, our uh, staff from the uh, Monetary Policy and uh, uh, Research, they part of this. So what the government is doing is, one, is investing in, uh, in irrigation. The biggest challenge we've had or the biggest impact of climate change has been on dry seasons. We've had low rains for the last uh, four seasons. So th that's the challenge. The fact that our agriculture is largely based on natural rain is a big challenge. So I know uh, the ministry uh, government has put up projects that are supporting farmers for small-scale trade, that means small-scale irrigation, and there are other projects for big-scale irrigation. That is the, 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 the only way we will be addressing these challenges, uh, the challenges of our, uh, agriculture or impact of climate change on agriculture. Uh, the other measure that have been taken, uh, increasing use of fertilizers. You know, government has really heavily subsidized sub fertilizers. There's also provision of uh, improved seeds. But all that, when we don't have rain, it becomes useless. So I think the biggest uh, uh, solution is really on irrigation. And I know there are a lot of initiatives uh, uh, in supporting this. Uh, so we also have Berry there, we have BDF. I know they have, they have funds to support uh, farmers to deal with the challenges in agriculture. So maybe they can, they can say more uh, to that. Thank you. So uh, DG Berde, uh, maybe you want to say something on, on, on two issues, agriculture bank and then what is being done generally to support agriculture. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Governor. On the agriculture bank, I'm probably, um, I'll revert back to the government officials, but what I know is that we've been empowered to increase lending to agriculture. Recently, as you've mentioned, there's been a World Bank financed loans that has been passed on through BRD. And uh, what we've done, uh, Honorable Letizia, is now to bring the rest of the private sector and the financial institutions on board. So the farmers can access this loan, which is at 8%. So 90% of the loan can be, um, can, be rate, can be priced at 8%, and 10% of the loan is priced at commercial bank rates. So Omunafa Shinguzanyo, ya 100 million, 90 million, ya badi kuri 8%. So harama bankari hano, nama microfinance, kwa tangye gukorana, um, to, um, bring, to bring BK on board, uh, to Mutanguha, to RIM, uh, to Equity Bank, to Goshen. So we are receiving applications, Muliberde, but we're also encouraging pri uh, private financial institutions to also come on board and be part of the CDAT project. At the moment, we have an envelope of about 15 million. 12 million have already been, 15 million dollars. 12 million dollars have been, already been committed, but the World Bank has, um, has pledged that if it gets fully committed, we can have an access to another window that could be up to 40 million dollars. So, Navgako umungu wa mafarangarahari, tulashawkora ninze go ziri muvigobzi maari. We are particularly targeting MFIs, kubarako tuziko our farmers Bakunda Kwabe Giri MFIs, Candy, um, these are important clients for BRD. So to our technical assistance, capacity building, Kurangunabu, Binjiri Muru Mushinga, Undi Mushinga Dufte, Mushinga wa Inabel, Aho uh Aburuzi, sorry, Bari Muri Piggery um, and Chicken Rearing, Bashak won an interest rate subsidy of six percent. So Niba the, the financial institution Baba high interest rate is sixteen. 
bashaka kwibona kuri 12 cyane baba ha interest rate ya 20 bashaka kubona kuri 14 so we are working hard not only to provide um, capital to agriculture but also to provide cheap capital to agriculture and also we are making sure that the term of the loan is longer konabyo byagiye bigaragara nk'imbogamizi so now for example see that umuntu ashobora gufata inguzanyo y'igihe kirekire kigera ku myaka 15 hari mona grace period nayo ishobora kubonekamo so we are working closely with the Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Finance kugira ngo bishobuke wandi cyanyuma navuga nuko dufite umushinga mushyashya dutegura to try to see how we can use uh, mobile payments and fintech to reach the last mile, to reach the last farmer. Kwe kigara gara mboga mzizi, hari is access to liquidity for MFIs and for, for institutions at the grassroots. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is in the pipeline. I hope that in the next monetary policy statement, uh, I'll have something bigger to announce on that front, but we're also working on that. And I know often, nabaniwa vugubuhins, bati mufashabanini, See, that is actually limited to Imishinga, it is 600 million. So we're really targeting the lower up to the middle size and not the larger size. But Abafit Imishinga Minini, Muri Agro Processing, Nabu to Afiti Hatana, Hatana Niaif two funds. So Abafit Imishinga Minini, a post harvest, Kiangwa, ya Agro Processing, Bashwa Kuzakuri Berde, Nawakawana access to a subsidized loan under Hatana. So manufacturing of agro processing and now we see that finally we're also able to target agro process agro production. Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, please hand over the microphone to Honorable Minister in the front. Thank you so much, Governor Kuba. We are moving towards an agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of agriculture. We are going to have a bank of to the value chains, to many you call it performing, to reducing the risk. No, no, you need to show up with today as today. BRD, now and very much financial sector. And I said, you call your own Havana government is a Shiraho, a Joe Bank because of the name Nina Jay is a Jaho because of the environment. I must have to go one is a Murakos. Murakos is an minister to the Fatty Vaso Vidibdanuma. Uh, one uh, here and another one I saw a, a hand over there. Yes, and it will be the last one. Thank you. Let's start uh, with the uh, CEO. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Governor, for a very comprehensive and a clear presentation. Mine is just a comment on uh, our contribution as BDF to support agriculture financing. We do have two kinds of products. The first one is actually managing the matching grant. Uh, and this is part of uh, the CDAT project, where we have received like 16 billion guanine franc to support, to, to support, to give grants to, to farmers. And uh, actually, we are not targeting big Farmers, the maximum is uh, 100 uh, million guanine franc, and um, we'll be supporting the whole value chain, uh, starting from uh, primary production, going through linkages with markets, and then agro processing. So that is one product we have. But also, we do partner with uh, partner financial institution to de risk them, to allow them to lend more to agriculture sector, including uh, see that program, but also other kind of financing of agriculture by uh, partner financial institution. We have uh, a budget of 30 billion one franc to the risk our financial sector to allow them to lend more to the, to the agriculture sector. And even we have, we came up with, uh, we have reviews 
our partial credit guarantee policy. We have discussed it with uh, partner financial institution. Now we are focusing on uh, what we call quick wins, where we are actually moving from uh, risk assessment as BDF to risk underwriting because risk assessment is the job of financial sector. Our role actually is to underwrite the, 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 the risk for, for, for financial institution. But also we have revised our processes to make sure that uh, we meet expectation from the partner financial institution to, in terms of turnaround time so that we can make sure that uh, in seven days we can uh, provide our services. And uh, also we had issues in terms of uh, compensation. We are in the, past, in the past we had like two stages of uh, compensating. We are on the first claim, we used to compensate 50% and then the requirement was for the partner financial institution to go through a recovery process and after that final claim will be dispersing like 50% uh, or the balance if you consider the recovery result. Now the new change is actually as the very first claim we, comp we compensate banks 100% uh, and then they go through recovery and after that we'll be sharing the recovery result between BDF and partner financial institution. This is a, a quick win kind of program, but also we, we, we need to improve more our partial credit guarantee product by embracing, for, for instance, portfolio guarantee. This is a request from partner financial institution. We are working on it, and uh, by January 2024, we'll be ready to discuss with partner financial institution the portfolio credit guarantee scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Governor. Uh, I would like to comment on um, life insurance. There have been a question about the, the growth, the expansion of life insurance. Maybe for that would be good if you introduce yourself. Yes. Sorry, uh, you. someone yes, has just spoken is the Director General of uh, BDF, and so please for that go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Odell Jean Chrysostom. I'm the CEO of Sun Lam Life and uh, the Vice Chair of ASAR. Um, it's true that when we look at our balance sheet as a life company, we are now three players. We remain, we remain small because our total balance sheet is around 100 billion something, which is low when, if we compare with the, the region the market like Kenya, like Tanzania. Um, we have been discussing on the strategy to grow quickly, really to, to make the impact that is expected on uh, the, the GDP of the country. And we have uh, um, seen that um, if we focus on two strategies, that growth can be achieved. Number one, we need to, 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 to expand to, to look uh, on uh, other alternative channels which are necessary, the, the, the traditional one. These are, uh, for example, the bank insurance. In other market, banks help in distributing product. And uh, other channel are, for example, the microfinance, microfinance institution, cooperatives. Th they are used in the other market to distribute and it really uh, speed up the penetration rate when we look at what happened in other countries like Botswana, like Malawi, they really play a very big role. Uh, another strategy is to look at how we can have some product mandatory. Um, we have started the discussion with the regulator and we are now doing a paper including GI and Life to see if we can really discuss with uh, other government stakeholders to make some life product mandatory for us to grow very, very quickly. Um, there are some products that are social and uh, contribute to the mobilization of the saving. Um, 
um, dukeneya ukundi kuno dutanga product zacu another strategy which is really important ni, ni the, the, the um, technology technology for us to improve on our customer experience na kuna ma bank um, ya atuma abantu accessing the account natwe tukaba tugifata igihe ibyumweru ukwezi kugira ngo umuntu abone amafaranga ye so we want to really to work on that to make sure that people can why not um, access their account through push push and pull as it was the case it is the case now for the banks um numva rero ibyo nitubigeraho tuganiriye nabandi ba stakeholders nyakuwa governor tuzabasha kugira ikindi duhindura mu bijyanye na growth ya ya insurance space murakoze thank you very much uh, i think this leads us to the end of uh, the questions and comments and interaction sessions. Uh, thank you for your candid participation. Now let's appreciate our panelists as uh, they take back their seats. Uh, we are eager to continue to receive your feedback about the session. Uh, what you're seeing on your screen currently is uh, a QR code that you can scan and fill in uh, a feedback and uh, a feedback about the session. We kindly request that you provide your feedback. It helps us to continue to improve how uh, we deliver this uh, to you. As communicated at the beginning of the day, during this uh, MPFSS session, the National Bank of Rwanda is also pleased to launch a set of guidelines for deepening women's financial inclusion that was developed to support the financial sector in Rwanda in the journey that they have already started and made such progress on of making the financial sector inclusive. Without further ado, I please request the technical team to provide a brief uh, launch video that will give us in summary what the guidelines are about. The women's segment has been excluded or underserved from the financial system in many places. In Rwanda, despite the rise in the overall financial inclusion level and the declining gender gap, a deeper look into the numbers proves that more needs to be done to move a financial system from a gender aware system to a gender transformative system. According to FinScop 2020, Formal financial inclusion stand at 77%, with 74% being female versus 81% being male. Formal credit stands at 22%, out of which 18% are female and 25% are male. A review of the root causes into the aforementioned statistics shows a number of challenges. Demand side barriers, including low level of financial literacy and awareness. Supply side barriers, including limited understanding of the women's segment, hence affecting the ability to design women-centric products and aligned marketing. Structural barriers, such as limited access to mobile phones and other access points. And finally, behavioral and societal barriers limiting women agency to manage their own finances. The National Bank of Rwanda is pleased to share with you a set of four guiding pillars for the purpose of enhancing financial service delivery to women in Rwanda. Integrating women's financial inclusion into the strategy goals of a financial institution. This entails to create a robust monitoring and evaluation framework for the set performance indicators. To increase women's representation in customer facing roles, middle and senior management. Developing customized products that target women's personal and business financing needs. To achieve this, financial service providers need to carry out market research on women and women-led businesses for product development. 
and mainstream gender across all financial product types. Building women's capacity to access financial services by understanding women's financial behavior with respect to social norms using interactive and digital educational tools and embedding learning in service delivery. To facilitate financial service providers to implement these guidelines, the National Bank of Rwanda will provide further capacity building to a gender champion from each financial institution in view to empower them to implement these guidelines and measure their impact. The National Bank of Rwanda will also continue to recognize over time financial service providers who invest in gender transformative actions. Thank you very much. I feel like I should ask for more applause. Oh, wow. And, and this is not to be unappreciative, really. It's just to recognize that the financial sector has done a lot for all the segments of populations in Rwanda, but also uh, more needs to be done. And uh, also, uh, I am a woman, so I have to just keep asking for more. Um, as the video just concluded, uh, we thank all the partners that have contributed to this development of the set of guidelines. Most importantly, the financial service providers that we are together today. You have granted several interviews, validation sessions that have enabled us to bring about uh, these recommendations. We also hope that we can continue to work together to make them a reality and to measure the impact they bring about in serving women. And of course, all our sessions at the National Bank of Rwanda are interactive. Uh, I'm opening the floor for comments and questions, but also noting that further capacity building and dissemination of these guidelines will happen. Uh, without further ado, please let me welcome an opening comment from one of our key partners, uh, Mr. Zano Mataruka, the resident representative of the IFC. Uh, you're welcome to make a comment as we also open the floor for others. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate the governor for both uh, the presentation of the uh, monetary policy, which showed that the financial sector is both sound and stable, but also for the launch of these guidelines. As the International Finance Corporation, we are very proud to have been associated with BNR on uh, developing these guidelines. As reflected in the video, the financial sector has an import, uh, plays an in, uh, financial inclusion plays a very important aspect of economic development as it aims to promote financial access and products for individuals and businesses, particularly those who have been excluded from the, financial, from the formal financial sector. And under safe population for financial services, such as women, youth, macro, small, and medium enterprises, face challenges to achieving financial independence, hence are limited in terms of their contribution to the country's overall economic development. And the women in particular in Rwanda constitute a very important market for financial services. F female labor force participation stands at 61%, which is above the global average of 47%. A case study which we did as IFC showed that women had about 42% enterprise in Rwanda, and they yet they comprise 58% of enterprises in the formal sector which accounts for 30% of the GDP. Significant strides have been made in the financial inclusion over the past decade, but women continue to, to, to remain disproportionately excluded from the financial sector, using fewer financial products and services. And therefore, as IFC, we are very glad uh, for the launch of these guidelines, which we have worked with BNR. BNR's gender mainstreaming strategy, uh, which stretches from 2022 to 27, has been developed to ensure that gender equality is integrated into BNR's operations and policies. By adopting this strategy, BNR continues to create gender inclusive policies, regulations that promote increased development and uptake of financial products and services for both women and male customers. Mm. To support the implementation of BNR's strategy and other policies and regulations, aimed at strengthening financial inclusion in the country 
IFC has worked very closely with BNR to develop a set of guidelines to directly engage financial service providers and equip them with, with a practical toolkit to deepen women's financial inclusion. The guidelines provide solutions to address barriers to women's financial inclusion, both on the demand and supply side. These barriers include mobility constraints, limited access to collaterals, low levels of financial literacy, and lack of customized financial products in addressing women's needs. With that, Governor, congratulations. We, con we look forward to continuing working with the BNR. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for such a great uh, recap of the guidelines as well. Uh, could we have more questions and comments in the room? Uh, this is the time. Yes, uh, we have one from, uh, thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations for the launch of these guidelines. Mine was more of a comment. Um, as women in finance, we've been gathering and creating an organization as a foundation to try to discuss some of these issues. And I just wanted to come back to maybe three things as we think about these guidelines collectively. The first one is really to what extent as a financial community do we really, um, I would say, put emphasis on developing products that are relevant to women? Or are we using women labeled products as a marketing tool? And I think as we were discussing with the central bank around the guidelines, this is one thing that was quite striking in the industry is that many of our institutions have women products, but if you look at the product, there's nothing women about it. It's just, you know, the picture and the name, but the product itself doesn't really have an incentive to attract women. The second thing is really for us to reflect about the fact that one of the issues that women face in access to finance is actually the fact that they cannot afford to have as many trips to the bank or to the MFI as men do because they do additional work at home that takes time. And therefore, if we're able to digitalize or to reduce the number of trips that are required by our institutions, indirectly this will have a disproportionately higher impact or benefit to women than it has to men. And then the third thing that we've discussed also through women in finance was how many of us have women who are leading branches? When the women go to the branch, who do they meet? And if we're able through the MFIs, the insurance, the, the banking sector to reflect on some of these issues, I think it would be quite powerful in terms of implementing these guidelines in a very concrete way. Thank you. And we're here, of course, as BRD to walk the talk and to provide support. We started working the MFIs aggressively, but uh, feel free to join and to come to BRD if you need any support. As a financial player, we're here to support. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for stressing really two important things. Uh, mobility is really about uh, the societal barriers that we are uh, talking about, not only uh, uh, that women have more uh, caretaking uh, roles to, to undertake, but also at the end of the day, the agency and the authority to make uh, financial decisions, whether they're in a business partnership or in a household, is not really that straightforward. And also leveraging digital financial services. This is also one of the pillars of uh, the guidelines, to be able to leverage low technology that is not expensive to use, but that simplifies how women access financial services. Um, we still have about time for two more comments. And qu Yes, we have one. Uh, please bring a microphone to the front. Rakoze, Nikoa Governor, Kwama to me, Nitwa Nirede, Madeleine, Domuni Mukuru, Ombudsman, Quiz Guidelines, News of Kitchens of Ogaho, Chane Chane about women inclusion, Nibjiza Ko, the Guidelines of Giweho, Ariko, Nukreva. Um, uko izashyirwa mu bikorwa cyane cyane muri financial sector uh, turacyabona complaint nyinshi uh, kuko tureba muri complaint twakira nk'urwego rw'umuvunyi cyangwa office of the ombudsman 
tujaweza kureba disaggregated data from uh, men women uh, complete zibazaje kubijyanye na financial sector ibyinshi tubona uh, nuko uh, service uko zitangwa birumvikana muri uh, cyane cyane muri um, zira microfinance aho bitari automated uh, bitari automated fully automated usanga hakiri mibazo ari ugasanga nanone mu buryo bw'imishinga nyira ngo accompagnement uburyo um, nka coaching ku bantu bagiye muri business cyane cyane mu byo ubuhinzi tubona abantu benshi baza kavuga ati natsi nguta inguzanyo BRD cyangwa na hand cyangwa bank uh, tindahomba barantereza ari ugasanga um, yabuza accompagnement umuntu umwe accompagna mu mushinga we mm -hmm. tubona reho naho tugomba kureba nibyo turabi uh, turabitaho by'umwihariko uh, women inclusion ariko turebe na accompagnement uburyo tu wa coaching uh, tu mu buryo bw'iyo mishinga bakora ikindi nanone um, uh, ku kutanga information aho haralakinga ikintu cyane cyane kuri bank no kuba clear in general ko accompagna umuntu wa Celon cyangwa se umuntu giye gukora umushinga ura akunguzanyo then agakora ariko nta bamenya ngo bimeze gute umwongera guhurira mu ku yo habaye ibibazo umugirati ugomba kwishyura derbi hari ugiye kwiaplika ensi de suite ariko iki kintu cyo kwa company umuntu byumwe hari ko women nimba turi tugiye muri izo guidelines how zaba applied biza ko twagombye kureba concrete measures za company izo guidelines to be fully implemented murakoze cyane murakoze cyane uh, nibyo koko ku kijyanye no kuvuga ko uh, for financial services delivery there's need to be more financial advisory is very important and transparency the national bank of rwanda not only through the guidelines but through the consumer protection is also working to ensure that full disclosures uh, happen during financial service delivery and we definitely take into account your comment to ensure that it's emphasized during the implementation of the guidelines thank you yes uh, this brings us to the end of this uh, part as well and almost to the last mile of today's program. Um, I thank you all for your participation. And also just before we receive uh, the closing remarks, just a few reminders for the media in the room. Uh, you, you, sh you are welcome to come back for a press conference. And for all of our participants, uh, you are also invited for a networking cocktail that will be set outside. Our protocol team will assist to show you the way. Um, Without any further ado, please let me welcome the Honorable Deputy Governor, Honorable Soraya. Please welcome for your closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Ingrid. Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable Governor, Honorable Senators and Members of Parliament, BNR Board Members, uh, Government Senior Officials, uh, Chief Executive Officers and Managing Directors of Rwanda's financial institutions, uh, distinguished partners of the National Bank of Rwanda, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed, good morning again. Firstly, I would like to express in the name of the National Bank of Rwanda our gratitude to you all for joining us today at the second monetary policy and financial stability statement of the year 2023 and your participation and support are highly valued. We have also just launched the first ever guidelines for deepening women's financial inclusion, which is testimony to the National Bank of Rwanda's focus on financial inclusion and consumer protection, in addition to our mandate of ensuring price stability and a sound and stable financial system. Secondly, 
I would like us to reflect on Rwanda's financial inclusion journey. The remarkable progress we have seen in the past 15 years are a result of collective effort from government, regulators, financial institutions, and citizens. And the journey really began with the FinScope survey in 2008, where at the time financial inclusion stood at 21%. And fast forward to 2020, we have achieved a commendable 77% financial inclusion rate. And when it, we take into account informal savings and credit services, financial inclusion moved from 48% in 2008 to 93% in 2020. And we are confident that the 2024 FinScope survey uh, that will be undertaken uh, next year will demonstrate further progress but we must do all we can to safeguard the progress made while addressing challenges and gaps which still prevent many of our fellow citizens from accessing and using financial services to create wealth for themselves, but also their families. Inclusivity has always been a foundational principle of our country's development. And in finance, we can proudly say that the gender gap has consistently narrowed, reducing from 15% in 2012 to 7% in 2020. However, this gender gap is still higher than the world average of 5%, as highlighted by the IFC resident representative. So we must do more to narrow the gender gap or eliminate it totally. This reflects the commitment of our leadership to provide equal access to financial services for both men and women. And it is important to recall that financial inclusion was the cornerstone of the financial sector development program, 2013-2018. The government had a target to achieve a minimum of 90% financial inclusion, including informal financial inclusion by 2020. And that target was achieved thanks to five key pillars. The first one was defining and monitoring financial inclusion. Second, financial education and literacy. Third, promoting inclusive financial products. Fourth, capacity building for financial institution. And lastly, a supportive and legal legal and regulatory framework, which BNR has endeavored to do. And the financial sector, we must recognize, has played a pivotal role in driving this transformation and contributing significantly to Rwanda's economic development. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, these significant strides we have made cannot make us ignore that segments of our population continue to face insurmountable challenges in achieving financial independence. Their full potential remains untapped, limiting their contribution to Rwanda's economic growth. Close to 80 central banks and financial regulators adopted in 2019 the Kigeli Statement with clear commitments to accelerate financial inclusion for underserved groups, the youth, the women, the people with disabilities, the forcibly displaced person, and micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. And to tackle this challenge, the National Bank of Rwanda initiated a variety of measures to accelerate financial inclusion, as well as narrow the gender gap, and these guidelines are a testimony to that commitment but I will also mention three other measures that BNR took, including one, establishing an independent financial sector development and financial inclusion unit in order to spearhead an inclusive, efficient, but also digitally driven financial system aligned with our national aspirations. The second initiative was conducting targeted, targeted financial education programs with a special focus on women and youth to empower them as financial consumers. And the third is that we continue to leverage data 
using our RegTech tool, the electronic data warehouse, to enhance delivery of financial services. Furthermore, this year, we unveiled our gender mainstreaming strategy with a mission to create an enabling environment within the central bank where women and men are equally valued, facilitated, and provided with equal opportunities in their career as central bankers. Hence, the guidelines we just launched will play a crucial role in achieving this mission by directly engaging financial institutions and equipping them with practical tools to increase women's access to saving, to credit, to insurance products, while fostering collaboration within the sector towards our shared goals. And let me end by recalling the overarching theme of the recently concluded Global Policy Forum organized by the Alliance for Financial Inclusion. The theme was stability, sustainability, and inclusivity for shared prosperity. It is paramount to recognize that the sustainability of our financial ecosystem depends on our ability as central bank to ensure that financial institutions are sound and stable, but also that they are provide quality and affordable financial services to those who have been historically underserved. As His Excellency the President Paul Kagame said, and I quote, our priorities are to advance gender equality across all sectors, especially digital and financial inclusion, and to continue challenging traditional gender norms. Our role as regulator will be to ensure three objectives, stability, sustainability, and inclusivity, are achieved by Rwanda's financial sector. Once again, I would like to thank you all for your participation and also express my gratitude to the BNR teams that have prepared this MPFSS 2023. I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy Governor, for the very inspiring uh, closing remarks. And this marks the end of today's MPFSS session. I have a few announcements. Uh, to our audience, all the materials presented and uh, the developed booklet are available through uh, the National Bank of Rwanda's website. We encourage you to download for further consultation. Uh, on our screen, we have a feedback uh, QR code. We kindly request that you provide your feedback about this session. It helps us for continuous improvement. For the media in the house, we'll reconvene in 15 minutes for the press conference. Uh, ah, I appreciate the mobile phones that are already scanning. Those that are not scanning, it means I won't get the feedback. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, for, for giving us feedback. Um, for the media in the house, we'll reconvene in exactly 15 minutes to begin the press conference. Um, and to all of our guests, again, thank you very much for your candid participation. We will continue to invite you and we hope that you continue to respond positively. You are invited to a networking uh, cocktail that is served right outside this room. Thank you very much.
murakoze cyane governor uyu mwanya turi kumwe nitangaza makuru our friends from the media uh, after the presentation uh, of the honorable governor we're going to take some questions shaka kubaza mu cyongereza no mu kinyarwanda and uh, we'll start with Alice uh, from New Times. Or David. Mufuge, ichinyama wakuru, na mazina yaanyi. Mwakoze, Governor Newt kwa David Nzabo, ni mangwari la Radio Dis na TV10. Uh, ndahera ku kibazo cya cya inflation ubwo duherutse nubundi mu gikorwa nk'iki ngiki mwe mwatwizeje ko wa muvudu ko ukabije witumba rya rya biciro ku isoko by'umwe ariko kubiribwa n'ibindi nkabyo ushobora kurangirana n'iki gihe mbe n'iki gice cy'ambere cy'uyu mwaka kugeza ubu ngubu mushingiye ku kwimibari hagaze uyu munsi uh, na niki ko kigo kibarurisha mi bari hari yo giherutse kugaragaza ese mushinge buko bihagaze uyu munsi muracyagaze kuri iryo jambo ya kwa governor ikindi nubundi kikiri kuri inflation bigaragazwa ko igihugu kidafite ikibazo cyari zavu kavuga ko hariho amezi ashobora kurenga amezi ane ese kuki iyo reserve idakoreshwa mu guhangana na inflation iva hanze kugira ngo ndasigare abantu bari ibikibazo cy'abakiri imbere mu gihugu cyane ko ndiyo hanze nayo yo muvuze kuri inflation nti habura mintambara y'uburusiya nti habura ibindi byo byose biva hanze kuki iyo reserve idakoreshwa ikindi kimwe cyanagaragajwe ni no guhenda kwinguzanyo mu bigo by'imari mu bigo byiciriritse nta ruhare iyi kirya cyemezo muherutse gufata cyo kongera cyo kongera urwuko rwa Central Bank kuri karindwi n'ibice bitandu kujana nta nta ruhare rubifitemo murakoze murakoze David ndaje ngo turase ku ntego ikibazo kimwe kugira ngo twese tuze kubona umwanya wo kubanza yes thank you eh ndaho nyako ibazo biri bwe bikeye kuko duherukana vuba hangaha kandi nkuko mwarebye byo ntabwo ntabwo mare myinshi rahinduka cyane ariko urugiye bewerize hape ku guhura namwe tukaganira tukizera ko mudutumikira neza ku kubandi wa bakiriya cyangwa se aba aba soma cyangwa bari binyamakuru byanyu so ku kibazo David warubajije ngira ngo no muri presentation ya kivuzo cya inflation nubwo mu kwa munani yashe na yongeye gatugiranyije no kwa karindwe ariko ntabwo byadutunguye ko mu kwa munani ubundi irebye cyateye kuri yakuzamuka mu kwa munani ni ibiribwa so mu kwa gatandatu no kwa karindwe hari akirimo umusaruro wa sezo B mu kwa munani ubutangiye gushiramwo sezo C taraza mu neza batangiye kutegura guhinga sezo ya ya A so birashoboka ko no mu kwa 9 ashobora kuba kari aho ngaho hagati ka 12 ariko twizeye yuko icyo twavuze icyo gihe no dusubiraho nuko mu gihe ngo cyakane izaba yamamase so nubundi projection turacyayifite turacyafite kizere ko mu gihe ngo cyakane izaba yagiye munsi y'umurandi kwijana mu mwaka utaha ikajya around 5% ariko twongera kugaruka ku byose bizategwa nuko uhinzi buzagenda so ibyo yeye tubivuze uko nguko utwizeye yuko imvura yatangiye kuza gahunda zero zo gutangira gihembwe kihinga twizeye yuko bizagenda neza so bira muse bigenze nabi mibare twatanze ishobora kutagenda uko twayitanze so ngira ngo no muri presentation yabonye twagaragaje uko tubibona uko bizagenda ariko dushyiramwe imbogamizi zishobora gutuma bitagenda uko tubibona so naho rero ikibazo gikomeye haramutse habaye ikibazo ariko sofa itega abashinzwe itegaje ngiye batwerekwe ko imvuri y'iki gihe izaba isanzwe in fact hamwe kabahejuru gato y'ibisanzwe 
kandi kazago kugira mu gice cya mbere cy'ukwezi kwa 12 bikomeje uko nguko twakwizera ko tuzagira ubuhinzi buzima so nuko bimeze nabwo ko kizera twa cyagifite imibare twa cyagikomeye nguko twa twayitanze eh deputy governor za ko kuga ko kibaza ngo ndaro aba cyakeye yasubije mbere kubirebanye na loans za MFIs Three reserves uh, when we go advance inflation and depreciation. Uh, reserves is a question of going to pressure kuri exchange market. Now go. Now go. I wonder if America will come out and go into me. Hat of depreciation. Only depreciation is there. One is so cool. He has come from the engineer. No, so how can? Because the na iji chiro cha yo, wondo reserves zire ho hawa ibe hivi da sansk, hawa iti ozo chida sansk, kituma amade vize traversi kwa import exports zaza mutse hizi ya chumi kujana. Ari kumhamu ri covid, cha jiji cha covid hara hawa ibe hivi da sansk, icho jiji tukua vya kumado tukua gurishaga milioni shano, eni infaks cha jiji kuchumwe ru. Tuwa zamu ya tujia kui minu ni chumine shanu kuchumwele. Tujia hali hawa ya iwi hevi da sounds. Ujia wengu mgo yuko tunu tujia mwini reserves. Tuga kukuramu, tuga fasha isoko. Nungu tukwa zamu yari kubitarisha hane. Mkwezi kwa kari nduru kwa muna hane tukwa tukwa zamu tukwa jeze kumilio ni chumi. So, na avgurero, uvundu reserves ziri hoku gutuma hata wa depreciation. Iri hoku kurguanyi chino jida sounds kwa chawa ya. Iwi nji iwi ni jihejitelu wa nuko. Iwi tumi zgu hanza li ujinsh chane. Kuko tukwa vizitu wana yuko uko mungu wa kujendu shia tufitiki za yuko mungu wa kutaha exchange rate market is only like it is stabilizing. So na gorele tukwa wajia kuko ujie kudipinga mwa sangu ya mazengu ujie kuguwa nuku nukura mirijichiro kuisoko kandu reserves wundi zifasha yu hawaii chino chida sanzwe jituma kuko hama faranga njira asana hoya vuzi vuruondu no gutumi za kenshu ga sanga ni wini ujiwa anze bichenewe uurelo hivili ho ni 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 kwa kundu bufite mwujie chita sanzwe wenda jika kata tukumusi kwa kwa wa hivida sanzwe uraha garika ufate kabili kumusi na ugo vivuga ngo rahi tuja kufata mchijega ujua ruzi gavinye kujira ngu kumeze kata tukumusi ichijega chiza zaruko bja uze urundu na nuchene kujiga ni mwe kumusi kujira ngu kumeze uwe aliki chijega chiro kujira bja wihe nida sounds so ni yoreo ni kwa reserve zizi ni kwa zi wazi maze ugo ndi kwa dukwa nukura kusoko vivu ndi shavijena neza na warusa ula mundu uwaza mwo ni kwa chinje ya zi tuwa dushi mga gushira Thank you, Governor. Kwe cho chiba zo chingu za nyo za microfinance yangu bigo bjimari bichiriri tse. Mkutu kwa itukwa wigaru tse ho. Kyo jichiro jitiru kwa kyo jichiro uko bachivara jitiru kwa na deposits bafite cost of funding changwa si chiguzi kyo kubo na yomafranga batanga hingu za nyo ichiguzi cyangwa cost ya operations zavo aha rero icyo twakwishimira nuko nkuko byagaragaye no muri bank ntago ikiguzi cyangwa inyungu kunguzanyo kiyongereye nubwo guhera mu mwaka ushize twagiye twongera inyungu fatizo ya central bank ntago kiyongereye icyakabiri nkuko byagaragaye muri aya mezi atandatu ashize kuva mu kwa mbere kugeza kwa gatandatu kuyu mwaka inguzanyo zo muri microfinance ziyongereho 48 ku ijana ari kigero gishimishije byerekana ko abantu bazitabiriye kandi bigaragara ko uko izo nguzanyo ziriyongera ariko nabishyura neza nabo ni benshi kuko twabonye ku igipimo cyo kutishyura inguzanyo neza kiri hasi ya ya benchmark dufite ya gatano ku ijana urebye nko mu myaka itatu ishize byageraga muri gatandatu ku ijana icyo nacyo nicyo kwishimira ikindi twari twagarutseho kizafasha gukomeza kongera izo nguzanyo ariko no kongera efficiency y'imikorere cyane cyane y'imirenge sako binagabanura 
amafaranga batanga kuri service zimwe na zimwe ni ikora na buhanga iyo automation ya sako twari twagaragaje ko mu mibare ubu imirenge sa kugeze kuri 116 imaze kugezwaho niryo kora na buhanga tukaba twizera ko uyu mwaka w'ingengo y'imari mu kwa gatandatu ku mwaka utaha uzarangira sako zose mu murenge sa 116 tuzagezweho niryo kora na buhanga ahubwo twinjiye muri phase ya consolidation aho zizajya zihurizwa hamwe zikakora sako ku rwego rwa karere district sako thank you Amrakoze, diamo tu dia gufata Janet, Alice, andentro nza disubisi diyo. Amrakoze. Amrakoze, nitwa uavya Janet, ndo mnyama kula televizio Rwanda, na radio Rwanda. Nifuzaga gusoma nusu kuvijia ni nini mirongo njendero guaho, igamisha kujenga mubare wa bagore wa kora na nivi gobi mari. Nifuzaga ko mwabitubwira mu rimakeya mu rurimi rw'ikinyarwanda ariko muna tubwira haracyari cyuho hagati y'abagore n'abagabo mu gukorana nibigo by'imari ndetse no kubona inguzanyo byaba biterwa n'iki ni ngamba za banyinkuru y'igihugu kugira ngo icyo kibazo gikemuke icyo cyuho tubone kigabanuka murakoze Murakoze Janet Thank you. My name is Alice Kajina from the New Times. I have one question with three sub-questions. It's about the insurance sector. You've said that the insurance sector has made profit for the first time in six years. Uh, what do figures say about this profit? And the next question, what steps did the sector take to reach to this point? And uh, does this mean that you expect more people to be players in this sector? Thank you. Thank you, Alice. The last question is that with this profit, do you expect more players in this sector since it has been shunned by many for some years now? Uh, so maybe let's, let it be clear. They have been making a profit, but mainly from investment and not from their main business, which is underwriting. So it's for the first time that they're making underwriting profit. I don't know if I have the exact numbers here. Uh, let me request somebody to check the, the exact number on the, the, the underwriting profit that they made uh, over the last six months. So it's, it's uh, yes, it's the first time since 2016 that they've been able to make underwriting profit. Uh, does this attract more players? I think we have enough players in the market, uh, in the insurance market. I think what is required now is to think of more products that can attract uh, or that can appeal to the needs of the customers and then support the growth and widening of the, of the insurance sector. Uh, so but otherwise, we, we, we see uh, at least the sector stabilized and has started growing on a, or it's now on a good path. So we expect to see more uh, innovations and development and in efficiency in the way they deliver their services, which at the end of the day will benefit their clients as well. So since I can't take care of the steps taken to reach to this point of uh, making a direct and profit. Yeah, there are many steps, a lot of, so there are regulatory steps we took since 2017, we issued regulations on uh, on issuing credit, insurance on credit, uh, we, we try to put order within the, 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 the association to stop the price wars they had at that time. There was really price undercutting. And if you remember 2018, when they introduced, they increased their, uh, their, their premiums for vehicles, they set a minimum that you can't go below. So that, that sort of... Uh, uh, prohibited the undercut, the undercutting that uh, people were doing to attract market. Uh, then, uh, of course, there's improvement in terms of the, uh, the, the working with the garages. So they've reduced the leakages that was there uh, in terms of frauds around uh, motor vehicle repairs. Uh, and of recent, they did another review of their pricing 
So as, as you heard, they increased their uh, third party premiums, but reduced on comprehensive insurance. At least they are doing more realistic pricing of their risks than it was before. Uh, so th there is a lot from the insurance side itself, but also we have to accompany them with uh, regulatory requirements that limited the abuse that we had before that was destroying the industry. Uh, thank you, Governor. Maybe I'll give also to Alice uh, um, so that we end on insurance, uh, the data on the underwriting performance of, of insurers. So in 2021, by end June 2021, they had an underwriting loss of 200 million, rand and franc. 2022, it was 400 million. And this year, they're at a profit underwriting uh, profit of 1.9 billion. But overall, since 20, if I take the three last years, they were making profits from 7.1 billion to 12 billion as of June uh, 2023. So, so we have to go to the to go to the next to go to the uh, yabagore nabagabo mu kugezwa ho service z'imari nkuko byagaragajwe mu mibare yurebye abagezwa uh, ho service z'imari mu Rwanda uh, abagabo ni uh, ni mirongo ni, 84 ku jana uh, abagore so mirongo 81 ku jana abagabo mirongo 74 ku jana abagore aho tuba twanashyizemo uh, nabagikoresha service z'imari uh, za informo nkuko twabivuze icyo cyuho rero cyakarindwe kwijana um, cyagaragaye mu muri Finscope survey ya 2020 mu mwaka wa 2020 iri hejuru kabiri kwijana ke um iki iki cyuho kigaragara ku isi yose aho rero niho twabonaga ko um, hagomba kujya hingamba uh, a central bank ariko no ku rwego rwa government cyo kugira ngo dukomeze uh, tugabanure icyo cyuho uh, nubwo habayemo progress ubundi cyo cyuho mu bihumbi 2010 cyari kuri 15 ku ijana ubu cyagabanutseho uh, kugera kuri 7 ku ijana ariko hari byinshi bigomba gukorwa cyane cyane iyi mirongo ngenderwaho twatangaje igamije gukorana ni uh, bigo by'imari gushakira ibisubizo izo imbogamizi zagiye zigaragara cyane cyane icyambere no imyumvire no kwigisha cyane cyane abagore ndetse nabagore bari mu nzego zitandukanye z'ubucuruzi cyane cyane ibigo bitoya nibiciriritse gukoresha services z'imari ariko no kugira ngo dukangurire ibigo by'imari gushyiraho products cyangwa se services z'imari zisubiza ibisubizo zisubiza ibibazo abagore bahura nabyo no kureba ukuntu izo services z'imari zakorohereza abagore byaba mu gutanga collateral tuziko nka BDF hari guarantee scheme ifite ku bagore ese irakoreshwa neza ese abantu byose barayumva kugira ngo turebe ko icyo cyuho cyagabanuka icyakabiri ni ukugira ngo uh, tunakangurire uh, ibigo by'imari cyangwa se tunafatanye ku buryo dushyira imbaraga nubwo nka central bank uh, tugenda dukora amahugurwa twigisha abantu kugira ubumenyi no kongera ubumenyi muri services z'imari umwihariko twaha abagore ni ubuhe nabyo dukora umwihariko twaha urubyiruko ni ubuhe kuko naho hari cyari micyuho kinini ibyo rero biri muri gahunda uh, twagiye dushyiramo ni imirongo migari twatangaje ikazajya idufasha nkatwe nka Central Bank kugira ngo tunasaba ibigo by'imari uh, gukora monitoring na evaluation nese services z'imari zidagera ku bantu bose kimwe uh, izo duha abagabo niba babona inguzanyo twabonye uko hakirimo naho icyuho abagabo babona inguzanyo ugeranyije n'abagore isi cyo cyuho kiraterwa n'iki ikindi cyagiye kigaragara ni imbogamiza abagore bamwe bagira zo no kugera kuri uh, aho ibigo by'imari biherereye aho rero niyo mpamvu dusaba ni ibigo by'imari gushyimbaraga mu mwikora na buhanga digital financial services kuko zo tubona ko zitabirwa n'abagore cyane uh, ibyo rero nabyo nibyo bizadufasha kugira ngo dushyireho iyo framework yo kukomeza kureba uko icyo cyo kirimo kugabanuka ariko ni ibigo by'imari 
nabyo bishyiremo imbaraga byaba mu kwigisha abagore no kureba imibare y'izo nguzanyo ikindi cyanyuma ni ukukangurira ibigo by'imari kugira ngo nabyo bigire ubwuzuzanye cyangwa byubahirize ihame ry'uburinganire byaba mu bakozi byaba mu bayobozi bafite kuko naho imbogamizi nuka kenshi usanga niba umugore agiye kwa kinguzanyo agasanga ari abagabo gusa barimo kure aribo balone officers bishobora gutuma atisanzura cyangwa se nabo batamwumva ngo bumve imbogamizi afite iyo rero inclusivity dushaka no mu nzego zose z'ibigo by'imari ari abakora mu branches ari nabayobora ibyo bigo by'imari nkuko no mu zindi nzego z'igihugu bimeze biri muri muri zo miyo mirongo ngenderwaho cyangwa sa guidelines twagaragaje uyu munsi murakoze murakoze mu binyemereye gafana twafata ibazo bibiri bya nyuma yes adam and sabiti nitwa Adam Squizera nange ngabonorera radio na televiziyo Rwanda ikibazo uh, cy'ambere mfite ibibazo bibiri ariko nifuza ko mwabinsubiza mu buryo buri in brief sinzi uh, icyambere uh, mwagaragaje igipimo cy'akarengwe n'ibice birindwe kuri Rwanda's economy performance najya ngo umutugaragarize uh, ki contributors kuri yo karindwi n'ibice birindwi ndetse mu ndadusobanure muri make kuri yo performance ya economy hanyuma ikibazo cya kabiri tuza hano ubushize mu kwezi kwa gatatu igipimo cyangwa se currency depreciation yari iri kuri gatandatu n'ibice bitano kwijana ubu ngubu twagaragajwe ko iri hejuru y'umunani kwijana ndetse ibishobora no kurenga kurushaho mu bihe biri imbere ese ni zihe ngamba banyinkuru y'igihugu iri bushyireho kugira ngo iryo faranga direke habe hashyirwa izo ngamba nyine zikumira ko yuko iryo faranga ryakomeza gutakaza agaciro cyane ko biri no kubangamira ibiciro ku isoko muza mahanga by'ibicuruzwa bitandukanye murakoze ibyo nibyo bya bibazo byanjye akoze adam sabiti murakoze cyane our brother mike my question is answered in english i would like to get a little bit of details about this the study that you're conducting in terms of cashless cashless payments uh, you said the study is, is yet to be published. What, what, will, what, will, be the, what will the study be showing uh, and what is it going to address? Uh, and also, uh, if you can clarify in English the response you gave to the TT about the, 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 the cost of uh, transaction on, on cashless payments. Yeah, Thank you, Sabiti. Maybe the last question, uh, I'm sure you, you got the answer. <laughs> Wouldn't you put it in English? <laughs> you want uh, a recorded voice ex explaining that? Or, uh, maybe starting with that. So, uh, uh, Adams, you want your question to be answered in Kenya Rwanda or in English? Okay, I shall go ahead here go to my point. So the, the, the cost of uh, cost of uh, digital financial services, I think what what the question was that they are high, and there was uh, one high can be relative. Uh, so, uh, and I think what I emphasized was th there's there's always push and expectation that all these services will be free of charge. I think the the move that. Uh, we had it during the COVID time when all fees were removed. People would have wished that it remains like that. But as I told the Honorable, it's, it's very difficult to, to maintain these services uh, free of charge because uh, these services are provided by investors. Investors have to earn uh, return on their investment, but they also continue doing further investments, continue growing the network, so there's no way to expect to give these uh, services free of charge. 
so, uh, and that is linked to your question now on the study. I said, well, it's, it will be difficult to determine whether this, the, the cost, the service charge is high or low or uh, uh, appropriate. So we had commissioned a study. It has taken time, more time than we had really wanted to try and uh, assess what would be the appropriate costing of these financial, uh, digital financial services. So it's to give sort of a benchmark of the level of charges that would be uh, appropriate that would attract use of these digital uh, uh, products, but also uh, reward the investors in this uh, space. So that is the study. Uh, we hope we can get it before the end of the year. Uh, and that would determine now where, when I say the saying it's high relative to what, maybe that study will indicate what the range would be of the charges of these uh, digital financial services. But the good thing is, as people are educated, I always uh, uh, when you look at uh, the merchants, when, when you're trading using these merchant codes, if I'm paying you and I don't pay you cash, I pay you through the, your phone, the cost of handling charges, cash, in most cases, is more expensive than the 0.5% you pay on. For example, if you, you I think, uh, um, 100,000, you pay 500 francs to use the digital channel. I think you have to pay a million zinga each year you might lose the money through leakages. Cash is cash. You're dealing with people that are counting cash. There'll be leakage here. You pay for transport to transport this money to the bank. So people don't count that because they don't issue direct money as they, they see uh, on, 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 on the charges. So, but this is what we, the study should be comparing and really uh, what should be the optimal uh, level of charges for these uh, digital products. Uh, so Adam Zawaj, it was a church, uh, 7.7% uh, presentation service service zaza mutseho just a minute when you look at the yes service zaza mutse tumi na mwenye biche bita tukujan ugo service harimo chana chana tourism sector alubu chira rujendo ama restaurant ichi biaza mutse tumi na gata tuni biche bita tukujan na ahoni kuri ujinge endo transport ama restora za mkoma makunya we na gata tu kujan. Hanyuma uh, ubuchuru uzi vugu hahira na bisanzu kitu kita trade services ujia za mtseo chumi na limwe ni bichevi tatu kujan. So service ya jizi uruhari unini muku za mwura ugu kungi chindi kuwele yuko service ya jizi uche chini ni cha ekonome ya chu. Nyangu mna unini munaani kujan na ekonome ya chu ijizwe na uh, na, na service yo iya te iya zamu se chanelo ijiruha yoni ni mukuzamu kwa kukuongo se mumsanji. Ariko na na uh, industry industry ugo mchini yangu ndo industry kwa vijeta ngi siku kovi reenze inganda gusa industry harimu inganda harimu guvatsi harimu uh, uchukuzwa moja gachiro. So na vijio ya zamu se kujiri shimi shije cha uh, karibu ni vichwe vita nukujana. Uh, so, depreciation cyangwa se gutakaza agaciro kw'ifaranga twavuze impamvu zibitera ibirebye ibintu tumeze amahanga byazamutse ho 18 hejo ya 18 kwijana ibyo dutwohereze bizamukaho 11 kwijana nibice birengaho gato 
ibi rero bituma kubera ibyo twohereza ibyo dukora amahanga n'ubusanzwe ni byinshi kurusha ibyo twohereza iyo habaye kuzamuka kunini n'ubirutaho bizamura icyuho icyuho kizamuka ba 23 kwijana icyo rero ni bisanzwe ku isoko yo ibishakwa biruta ibihari buri gihe bigira ibitumye igiciro kizamuka n'icyo cyatumye tugira gutakaza agaciro kwifaranga nuko abakenya amadovize gutumiza ibintu hanze byabaye byinshi byabaye byinshi kubera impamvu byiri nyamukuru kimwe no kubera kuzamuka ku biciro ku rwego mpuza amahanga iri ya inflation yabaye ku rwego mpuza amahanga so niyo watumiza tuvuge litro za essence ibihumbi 10 uko zari zimeze mu mwaka ushize uko zaguraga n'ubu nguko zigura byarazamutse kubera ubwo n'imbere kubera nyine ibiciro byazamutse ariko none ho nubwinshi rw'ubitumizwa na bwarazamutse kubera ko ubukungu batembere cyane muri iki gihe gishize mu mwaka ushize no mu mwaka no mu gihembwe cy'ambere nawe byatumye ibikenerwa mu nganda twavuze nganda zazamutse ibikenerwa mu mwishora mari byarazamutse bituma nibiribwa kubera ko ubuhinzi bwacu butagenze neza aho gutumiza ibiribwa hanze byinshi kurusha ibyo twa ibyo twatusanze gutumiza ibyo byose byagize uruhare mu kongera amafaranga cyane gutumiza ibintu hanze bituma ayo dukura hanze adahabasha guhaza bituma igicuro kizamuka so ibi rero ire byo ikintu imibare igenda ubona kuzamuka kwa imports yufashe mu yembwe cyambere cyangwa mu makushe bitangiye kugenda bimanuka bidukize yuko is pressure mu mwaka utaha zizaba uko ubukungu burusha kugenda neza no kongera bitweza amahanga no kongera cyane cyane ubukira rugendo nawe twaberetse yuko twabonye madovisa haje mu cyaro rugendo banyarwanda bari hanze uboheza amafaranga hano so dufite kize yiko mu mwaka utaha dushobora kubona i depreciation igende manuka so ni ni nibo bwa mbere mu myaka hafi 20 tugize depreciation irenga 10% so abaza gaho bigeze ubimaze kurenga 12% so urumva ni 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 pressure idasanzwe ariko dufite kize yiko mu mwaka utaha dushobora kubona bigenda bimanuka bitewe nuko ibyo dutumiza hanze tubona ibibare garagaza ko bitangiye kugenda bimanuka kana amafaranga ya dukura mu bukira rugendo no muri izindi nzira byo akomeza ku kuyongera so twizera yuko biza bizagenda bimanuka thank you amurakoze cyane and that brings us to the end of our press conference today i want to thank our media partners and i uh, want to thank the governor the deputy governor and the chief economist of the national bank of rwanda Mujiru Monsi Mgeza.